So PWMs, pulse width modulation, are going to be the main ways we drive things this semester. We drive the motor. We drive the little piezo buzzer to make a, sound, a song. We drive an LED to make it brighter and dimmer. Okay. We drive a little RC servo motor. If you're with, uh, we're going to be playing with RC servo motors are nice and cheap, and they're nice little compact devices. So very nice for just commanding a simple little angle. They're used for rudders and RC airplanes and all that kind of stuff, right? So I really like using those. We're going to use a PWM to tell those RC servos to go to an angle and stop. Okay. Um, we could use a PWM to drive a heating coil. There's all sorts of things we can do with PWM through a chip. Now, that PWM signal won't necessarily go directly to the device you're driving. We're going to see with our motors, we're going to PWM a motor driver chip, and then that motor driver chip will drive the motor, actually source the current and all that kind of stuff. Okay. What's coming out of the microcontroller, out of our processor, is very low current. So that normally has to be amplified to drive something like a motor. Okay, but the idea of a PWM signal, pulse width modulation, is normally a PWM signal has the same, has a constant carrier frequency, normally. So the period from one high edge to the other high edge is constant. Okay, and we call that constant carrier frequency or carrier period, whatever way you like to think. Okay, so, and this is usually going to be pretty fast. We're going to play around with some slower ones. Well, actually, with the RC servo, it's pretty slow, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, we're talking in the kilohertz, usually, range for these carrier frequencies. Okay, and so this time is constant. What varies in a PWM signal is the duty cycle. Okay, is this width. So the width varies. And so by doing that, we, we talk about that as percent duty, I'm uh, sorry, percent uh, duty cycle, right? You've heard of that before. And by changing that percent duty cycle, we, the, the duty cycle will be proportional to the current, for example, that we drive to the motor. Okay? So just by, and it's nice because we can do this with just a digital signal, right? There's only two states of this PWM signal. Either it's high or it's low, isn't it? The thing that's varying is the time that it's high and, in a sense, the time that it's low, right? Because that period all never, never changes. So we have this idea of what we think of 0% duty cycle. That would be a signal that's always low, right, in the case here. So the signal is just ground. Or 100% duty cycle, where the signal is always high. And then anything in between, 50% duty cycle, 25% duty cycle, etc. And what's nice about that is because we have some pretty high resolution timers, we can get, you know, 0.1% duty cycle and 0.2%. We have fine resolution there to change our duty cycle. Okay? Uh, and so that's the idea. So we have, you're going to see it on the oscilloscope this week. We're going to be starting to use the oscilloscope in lab. And you'll see that you can very finely adjust the duty cycle of this square wave. It's not choppy. It's not like there's just 25%, 50 you know, there's four, uh, four things to select from. We have, actually, the way we'll set it up for the driving the motors, there'll be 2,500 different duty cycles that we can program or we can tell the, the, uh, the output to, to have, right? that PWM output. Now, how does that work? And we'll get into this more detail on Wednesday. We remember, remember for the CPU timers, CPU timer zero. 
remember it had a TIM register and a period register. <coughs> remember that, guys? And remember the TIM was getting was the counting register. And it counted at our rate of 1 over 200 million, right? Because of the 200 megahertz clock. That was the rate it was counting. And then when the TIM equaled the value we put in the period, an event happened. We call the function. The hardware called the function. Well, you can actually set up PWM if you want to uh, call a function uh, when, uh, when a timeout happens. But that's not what we want to do when we want to think about PWM. Our event instead is changing an I.O. pin, the PWM out, from low to high or from high to low. That's the event. So instead of calling code in your CPU, it's going to move an I.O. pin for you. You don't have to do it. You remember, the, the GPIO is no longer connected to that pin. It's controlled, that I.O. pin is controlled by the PWM unit. Hold it high and low. So let's think about that. What if we did this? So for PWM, we have an additional register. So we have, it's called the TB counter register. That's the same as this TIM register, similar. A little different is it's only 16 bits. So we got to watch out for that. There's also a TB PRD register. 16 bits. All of these are. And I don't know why they don't put TB in front of this, but they just call it compare A. All right. There's actually also a compare B, but let's just talk about the compare A. So the TB initially by default, the TB CTR counts at a rate of 50 megahertz. So the period is 1 over 50 million. Okay. Then we set up the period, um, whatever, let's say we, we set the, t you know, this goes from zero and then to one and then to two, right? It just counts at this rate of 1 over 50 million, three, four. In period, we can set a value. It's a 16 bit value. We could set that maybe to 4,000. Okay. We'll talk about how you scale that. But 4,000, and then maybe this compare A, let's set it to 500. Okay. Now what you're gonna see is we have two events. So what's the life of CTR? I'm about out of time. CTR, it's gonna count up to the period value and then reset itself back to zero. So if we look at that in time, uh, TBCTR just keeps on counting up until it reaches 4,000. Then it's going to go back to zero and start counting up, 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 up again and then go back. That's its life. That's what TBCTR does. Okay? But now there's two events along the way. One event is when it equals period, right? The other event is when TBCTR equals compare A. And so that's down here around 400, 500, sorry. What happens? We can set it up such that when uh, the, the TBCTR equals 4,000, the IO pin, this is the output, output, output pin goes high. When, T, oh, when the compare A value is reached, it goes low. And you see what's happening? So now this I.O. pin is being commanded by these two events. And by changing to, to uh, compare A to say 1,000, what happens? You know, that's somewhere up here. Your duty cycle changes, doesn't it? So this compare A register is your register for changing the duty cycle. What do you think? That was really quick. We'll, we'll go over that again on Wednesday. But that's the idea. Now we have, in a sense, two compares, two things we're checking. The period for the carrier frequency, and then compare A to adjust the duty cycle of your PWM signal. Yeah? So in the time between um, 0 and the time it reaches like 4,000 counts, uh -huh. is it only turned on and turned low once the 
Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Very good. All right. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Or